Okay, today we'd like to go a little farther with our study of switches and capacitors. Yesterday we learned how switches affect what's happening in our circuit. Today we want to add in the capacitor. Okay, so yesterday we saw with the switch open, the current took the top path and it was like we had a series circuit. When we close the switch, we shorted out this top resistor because now we had a path of no resistance. This gives us a short circuit where all the electricity takes the bottom path and the only resistor that's active will be R1. You guys did brilliantly with this so far. The ones I graded so far were really good. So today we'd like to add in a capacitor. So we've done capacitors, we've done resistors. Now we'd like to do the combinations of resistors and capacitors. And what we're going to do is we start with the switch open. This time when the switch is open, we get no current because there is a break. So there's no way anything can flow through this circuit. We're then going to close our switch. And you'll notice that the current jumped up to almost 10 immediately, a little more than 10 actually. And then you'll notice that the current is slowly decreasing rapidly at the beginning, less gradually near the end, back towards zero. So what's happening is this capacitor started out uncharged, but as time went on, we started to get charges building up on the capacitor. And once the capacitor hits its maximum charge for this voltage, no more energy, no more charges can be placed on the capacitor. At this point, the capacitor has 4.5 volts on it. The battery has 4.5 volts. There is no current flowing through the resistor, so no volts are left across the resistor. And our circuit has hit a long-term uh, status where nothing is flowing through it. So the only time anything flowed through the circuit is when I first threw the switch. That's because this capacitor had nothing on it. It was providing no opposition. It acts like a wire, and that's the important thing. When the capacitor is uncharged, it may as well be a wire. But as soon as it starts to build up charge, it starts resisting the flow of more charges. And when it's fully charged, this is important too, the capacitor acts like an open switch. It stops electricity from flowing through this part of our circuit. Okay, so again, the summary, when the capacitor is empty, it acts like a wire. And when the capacitor is full, it acts like an open switch. Okay, so you'll notice it left behind this green marking on the current meter. That is the maximum current. That's when it was uncharged. That's when it was acting like a wire. And we can use that to figure out the resistance in our circuit. So we do I equals V over R. The I is the maximum current before the capacitor got any charge on it. I can see that's a little more than 10 milliamps. So 0 0.01, maybe three. The voltage was 4.5, and I solved for the resistance. That's how I get the resistance on the resistor. To get the charge on the capacitor, I do Q equals CV. I use the voltage of 4.5, that's when it's fully charged. I use the capacitance value, and I can figure out how much charge I have stored on that capacitor. Okay, so now we'd like to combine what we did yesterday with what we did today and see if you can handle this. Okay, so we've got two resistors, we've got a capacitor, we've got a resistor and a capacitor that are connected in parallel, and we've got our switch that is working with this capacitor only. You'll notice we start with this current just like yesterday. That's the current when you have both R1 and R2 active. So you can start out with your I total equals V total over R total. 
Use that value, which is about 100 milliamps. Your voltage is 10.5, and you solve for R total. R total, again, is going to be R1 plus R2. You cannot, at this time, solve for either one because they are both unknown values. Here's where it gets a little tricky. We're going to throw the switch. Remember, when you first throw the switch, this is going to act like a wire. It's going to short out this resistor, but that's not going to last for long. As this thing starts to build up charge, it's going to go back to having this act like an open switch. So again, if you watch the needle, we start about 100 milliamps. We're now going to throw the switch. You'll notice that the current went up, and then the current doesn't return to zero like it did on the last one. It returns back to the steady state where this bottom branch is acting like an open switch, okay? So what we do is to figure out our R1, we do I equals V over R, just like we did yesterday. We use the maximum current, which in this case looks like it's 120. Our voltage is 10.5, and we solve it for R1. Again, this green line represents when I first threw the switch, and this was acting like a wire, okay? It was shorting out this top one, and that allows us to get R1. Once we have R1, we go back and we find R2. Okay, the tricky part is getting the charge on this capacitor. We know that charge equals CV. We know the C value. The voltage is not this. This voltage is getting shared by these two resistors. So what you have to do is figure out how much voltage is on this guy and how much voltage is on that guy. So we know the current right now. That's the red one. Okay, the red one is our steady state once this charges up. Okay, so we take this current. We plug it in as I1. We do R1 based on what we found when it was first shorted out. Okay, we plug that in here and we solve for V1. V1 better be less than 10.5. We do the same thing here. I equals V over R. This time we're doing I2, V2, and R2. We use the same I. The point one, the steady state, once the capacitor is charged, we plug in our R2 value and we solve for V2. Here's the important thing, once we get that V2, that's the voltage on this resistor. It should also be the voltage on this capacitor because these two are in parallel. In parallel, everything gets the same voltage. I hope this was clear. This is one of the trickier things we've had to do all year, but hopefully we walked you through it step by step. You did so well on Friday's work that I'm hoping this is not that big of a leap. Anyway, guys, have a great day, and I will talk to you soon.